Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and History. And we are here being attacked by the entire Visigothic horde, led by this gentleman here, Atalf, but really led by their king, Alaric, who I'll speak about in the battle because he is a very interesting character. We are led by Emperor Arcadius, who historically was not much of a warrior. He was actually kind of a weak emperor. When he was not being controlled by his ministers, he was being controlled by his wife. In fact, some even speculate that his son, Theodosius II, was not his at all, but actually between his wife and a lover. Regardless, in this campaign, Arcadius is going to be a great warrior. However, the game is right in supposing that right now this battle is going against us. They have a lot more cavalry, the terrain is flat, so I'm going to retreat and hopefully get to a better location for the battle. This is much better. I think that was a really good choice. They are, however, going to make it to us, so we are going to have to fight a battle. Let's do it. For Rome, gentlemen and ladies. Will you do your duty for Rome? So, Alaric, leader of the Visigoths. Let's talk a little bit about him and his history. So, he was born on an island in the mouth of the Danube River. And he was born right about the time when the Huns showed up on the scene. So, as a child, that's when his people had to uproot themselves and move into Roman lands after being attacked by the Huns. And you can imagine this would leave an impression on him, having to pick up everything he knew and migrate with his people into Roman lands and then to be taken advantage of, as they were by the Romans, see his people sold into slavery, see people starving, not having a home. It must have been really hard for him. I can only imagine. All right, so let's see here. The terrain is favorable for us. We're on an uphill, which is great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my lines, but then I'm in my formation, but then I'm going to move them back to the edge of the map. So let's see. Okay, good. This is good. So what I like to do is I like to set up my spear infantry in a line in the front. Then, because we're outnumbered and the enemy has a lot more cavalry than we do, I'm going to put my cohorts or my sword infantry on the flanks. And they can be fast responders to see what happens in case cavalry try to flank us, or they could simply reinforce the battle line wherever is necessary. Then I'm going to put our archers in the middle behind my spears. Now, the game's formations, the ones they set up, typically put the archers in the front. And I see the benefit of that. They can shoot at the enemy earlier. However, I find that that advantage is lost when the enemy get close, and then they have to disorganizedly run behind the line and then get themselves situated again. So I just like having them start behind the line. They may not be able to fire as soon. However, they can continue to fire throughout the battle. And then Arcadius, I'm going to keep him safe in the back. And I'm actually going to keep the cavalry safe in the back as well. Because I'm going to wait till their cavalry attack my spears and get defeated. And then I'll move my cavalry out to hammer and anvil them. But if I move the cavalry out too soon, their cavalry will chase them down and kill us all. So let's select everybody. And let's create a selection group and then create a formation group. Excellent. Start the battle. So now I'm going to move everybody back. This isn't... Okay, come on. Controls. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So where's everybody going? All right, that's acceptable to me. Okay. Our advantage is rapidly shrinking as the enemy reinforcements show up. So let's move up the speed until the enemy makes an appearance, and I'll speak more about Alaric. So the next we hear about him, he is a young man, and he actually signs up with the Roman army. He is an officer in charge of the Federati. He is notable for one battle which takes place, one of the most famous battles of this period, which is the Battle of the Frigidus, or the Frozen River. It is a civil battle between the eastern and western halves of the empire. The western emperor, whom Theodosius I, Theodosius the Great, put into place, died under mysterious circumstances. He was told, Theodosius, that the emperor committed suicide, but Theodosius believed treachery and foul play. The emperor that was elevated 
in place of the dead emperor was a gentleman by the name of Eugenius, and he was elevated by his barbarian general. Theodosius did not have a say in this. So Theodosius already was not too happy about this, but then this new guy, Eugenius, despite being a Christian, started to revive some of the old pagan traditions of Rome, and Theodosius, who was a strict Christian, did not appreciate that very much. So the communications broke down and Theodosius raised an army to move west and take the empire for himself, and he wants to put his son Honorius on the seat of the Western Empire. So this battle took place in a valley referred to as the uh, Vipava Valley in what is today Slovenia. And what's interesting about this area is that they are occasionally hit by very violent and sudden gusts of wind that are known as Bora. And it's a, it's a phenomenon that takes place to this day. So the legend goes, and of course this is probably not factually accurate, but it makes a really good story. Historians doubt its reality, but the legend goes that on the first day of battle, the Western Empire set up a statue to Mars on the battlefield. And Mars, as you know, is the Roman god of war. So they were kind of embracing the paganism. And in that first day of battle, Theodosius and the Eastern Army lost handily. So at night, they were kind of both repairing to their camps, and Theodosius, by legend, basically prayed to God, the Christian God, and asked for a miracle. He asked for a storm. So the next day in the morning, when the battle was about to start, these intense gusts of wind, these bora, started happening, and not only did it completely demoralize the army of the West because the wind was blowing in their face, but it blew dust and debris into their face so they couldn't see, and it also, again, according to the story, blew their arrows back upon them. So what ended up happening is the Western army was completely routed, Eugenius was killed, and Theodosius, though it was a Pyrrhic victory and his troops suffered greatly, he won the battle. And so he, again, was unquestionably in charge of the entire Roman Empire, and he put his young son, Honorius, on the throne in the West. Now, how this all relates to Alaric is that Alaric was the leader of the Federati during this battle, and he led an army of about 20,000 Goths. And this battle was not an easy one on the Goths. And hold on a second here. I need to set up my spearmen in their testudo formations because we're getting hit with a cavalry charge. Okay. Out of the 20,000 Goths reportedly in the battle, fully half of them, 10,000, died. So the Goths really took it hard. And in thanks for this, the Emperor Theodosius really didn't do anything. He didn't even really acknowledge Alaric. So Alaric was kind of disenchanted, and he went back to his people. Now, what's interesting about that is... What are you trying to do, dudes? What's interesting about that is... Oh, attack. Okay, that's the only flank we're being hit on. And I don't think they're going to get very far here. Well, combat's even. Now they're winning decisively. That's weird. But we'll let it go. They won't win forever. So four months after this battle was won, Theodosius died. And that's where we are now, basically, in this game. With Alaric being elected king of the Visigoths, he kind of has a grudge against the Empire because he fought and lost a lot of his people in that battle. In fact, some even speculate that the Goths were put in harm's way so that they would be killed because Theodosius wanted them to not be as much of a threat. Okay, cavalry was breaking upon our spear lines. Excellent. Although now we have their pikemen coming in and... Okay, so this is something that happens that I don't understand and it drives me crazy. Your spearmen, when they're in Testudo, break formation. And there's no reason for it. And you can't even command them to move. They just break formation. They're, they're facing this way, but then they face this way. So I gotta take them out of formation and get them back in here. And I gotta move a cohort in to help them out, unfortunately. All right, let's move my cavalry out and maybe hit these cavalry from the back. So Alaric was justifiably pissed off at the Eastern Romans, as were his people. 
And so that's where we're at. They are now currently rampaging through the lands of the Eastern Empire. And in the next episode, we'll talk about what happened to Alaric historically after this period. Although hopefully in our game, we will murder him and all of his people. Okay, let's move out this unit of cavalry. The lines are strong. They're holding. You, you can move out. Okay, so they've managed to flank us here, but that's okay because they are very weak. And we can... Yeah, they're already running. Okay, so these two units, I'm going to move forward. Cavalry, I'm going to go after the Germanic Hurlers. And this cavalry, I'm going to go after the Germanic Bows. They, these guys broke formation. That's okay. These cohorts, I'm going to move up. These spearmen, I'm going to move up as well. In fact, I'll just move these guys up as well. We'll move these guys up and these guys up. And here is Atolf. I don't know where Alaric is. But things are kind of tough in the middle here, so we need to quickly... Go. Let's send these guys after these guys from the back. Let's get these guys over here. These guys will go here from the back. And we're already scaring off their ranged troops. Really, this is the fast you can go. Moving fast. I'm going full speed, aren't I? Yes, I am. The Gothic Levy is already engaging our archers, but they're pikemen, so I'm not going to send my emperor in there. I'm just hoping that by getting all their other units routed that we can take care of them as well. Okay. So the lines are kind of holding, I guess. Our, as you can see, our spearmen are taking it pretty badly, but we just routed a group of archers, or hurlers, actually. But now we're being chased by the nobles, which is, we can't, that will be a losing battle. So let's flee from them as best we can. You actually, let's go hit these guys and then we'll move in and attack from behind. Okay, so you're not currently fighting. Get in the battle. It's hard to really see what everyone's doing here. Okay, so they are kind of fighting against the skirmishers, I guess. These guys are not... Come on, get in the battle, folks. Flank the pikemen if possible. Okay. Okay, so this group in the middle is unfortunately broken. If you guys wouldn't mind, you know, fighting the enemy, I wouldn't be upset about that. Alright, so we took out those archers. Let's... Try to get these pikemen from behind here. That would be very beneficial to us. Okay, the Emperor is getting these guys steady. Alright, here we go. Alright, right into the pikemen. Of course, now they're going to be able to reform and train their pikes on us. So let's... Oh, never mind. They're already running. Excellent. Excellent. Now you guys take out these pikemen. Just surround them. Emperor, move up a little bit. Just a little bit. So you can motivate your troops. Okay. Cavalry's here. Let's go after these hurlers. Excellent. Oh, they're being chased, however, by Atolf. Where's our other cavalry? Okay. Go for the archers. If you can get to them in time. We have the enemy. Okay. This is going really well for us. Let's take out our swordsmen with their swordsmen. Since swordsmen are typically better combatants than the spearmen. Alright. Cavalry, get out of there. You've done what you need to do. Go hit these. Oh, here's Alaric. Yes! Let's take out their king. Come on, guys. Boom. 
Excellent. That's what I want to see. Let's see if we can't find Alaric. They all kind of look the same to me. That's pretty racist. All Germanics look the same. All right. Get the cavalry out of there. The enemy general is dead. All right. Alaric is dead. Let's go take out... Oh, they're already running. Okay. Okay. Cavalry. Loosen up. Go after the ranged troops. Loosen up. Chase off the stragglers. Or actually, you're over here. So let's chase off the stragglers in this direction. And we're about to engage. I see a golden eagle. Right there. And then the dragon symbol, which is also what the Eastern Romans used. Or both Romans, probably. This is the second group of German nobles. I can't really... Which one is their leader? What is it? Does he look different than the other ones? Can't really tell, but... We are victorious. What do we have here? Germanic brigands. Alright, we can speed it up. The battle is well, well under control. 28, yeah, go after them. You're clear. They're gonna make it out in time. Okay. We're not done yet, guys. We have some barbarians to kill. I don't want the Goths to ever, ever again taste the sweet air of freedom. Okay. So we'll speak more about Alaric in the next episode. Because he goes on to do a great many things. Even though in this battle he died. He even, for the first time in hundreds of years, sacks the city of Rome. So, there's a lot about Alaric that we still need to talk about. But right now we're, we're busy murdering fleeing barbarians. Oh, and one thing I think I should make clear is that the term barbarian, we use it today to mean kind of like Conan the Barbarian, right? Like some uncivilized brute. And I think compared to the Romans, the Huns probably fit this stereotype pretty well. But really to the Greeks and the Romans, the term barbarian simply means foreign people or people who speak a different language. The Greeks basically considered that all non-Greek languages kind of sounded like the person was going bar, 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 bar. And that's why the term barbarian came to be. So it doesn't necessarily mean what we mean today of like uncivilized wild warrior with no armor or anything. It's it's more just a foreigner. Like Gaijin uh, in Japanese. All right. Well, Alaric has fallen. His lieutenant has fallen and we have crushed the Gothic army. I believe that the decision to flee from the first battle and fight the battle in more favorable terrain in the forest and up the hill was a very wise move. We didn't even lose one unit. Everyone survived. And let's... I love this, by the way. Take on warriors. It gives you more troops. It doesn't do anything to you. I mean, if you ransom them, you lose integrity. Or your force loses integrity. For 196 gold, it's not worth it. And killing them is just kind of a dick move, in my opinion. And while in this period of time, of history, pretty much everyone was a dick. With, of course, the exception of Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> though he was hundreds of years prior to this. Okay, the Geats. The Geats are being aggressive. Well, okay. I will enter the war with you. And Visigoths survived. They're still running around. That's crazy. Well, in the next turn, we are definitely going to finish off what we started here. I could have sworn we, we took them out pretty decisively. 
And yes, this is what happens when a province gets raised. It all burns to the ground and there's nothing left and it's just kind of an empty province. Okay, the Roxolanians are declaring war as well. Where are, where are they? That's obviously near us, but... I see the Bastarnians, the, the Alans, the Huns, the Gepids. Where the hell are the Roxolanians? Ostrogoths. I, I don't know. They're kind of in my neck of the woods, but I will break the alliance if I don't. So while it might be smart tactically, I, I really want to stay allied with the West because that's just thematic. And that's what I want to do. So Flavius Arcadius Augustus of the Legion XI Claudia destroyed the Visigothic army and killed Atalf and Alaric. And now Constantinople has shared the consumption with Tremontium. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.